Has your group been labeled as a terrorist organization? Have you been labeled as a terrorist? You have no right to do this. We do have the right under five days. Please. We get threatening phone calls. There's people following our trucks. No. Hey. They're hey. terrorizing our local farmers. They're terrorizing us. Go. Go. I don't want to kick your ass. Can you hold that? OK, folks, we are inside. I was able to duck under someone. How much show me what's happening? I'm in Berkeley, California, and I'm meeting with an animal liberation group called Direct Action Everywhere. Also known as DXE, they're notorious for their extreme tactics, which include civil disobedience, it was not humane, and it is not natural, mass protests, Freedom, and trespassing. You're not under arrest. Because several of DXE's tactics are illegal, many of their members have been arrested. Some are even facing felony charges that could land them up to 60 years in prison. You are Stop. Being Stop. But even with the Stop. looming threat of prison time, DXE is planning the largest action in the history of the organization, which will happen tomorrow morning at an undisclosed location. What are you doing? You have the legal right, you have the legal right to be here. So let's, no. next, let's do it again. Let's do it all one more time. My name is Wayne Shung, and I'm co-founder of the Animal Rights Network Direct Action Everywhere. I'm also a lawyer and former law professor. We started DXE in 2013 because we wanted to build a movement for animal rights. We do these things because we care about the animals. Does everyone understand that? Yes. That is now a moral and legal contract when you do work with DXE. We have been labeled as terrorists, and it's shocking because we're just a bunch of people who volunteer at dog and cat shelters and really love animals. Some of these terrorist labels may be in response to past DXE actions. In May of 2018, Wayne was indicted with multiple felony charges after breaking into a pig farm in Utah to document living conditions. He removed two piglets from the property. These charges could send Wayne to prison for 60 years if he's convicted. So you are facing pretty much the rest of your life in prison. Yeah. And you're still going to participate in this open rescue tomorrow. Yeah. Why? For most of the past 20 years of my life as an animal rights activist, I thought to myself that there will come a time where you have to make some sacrifices to bring exposure to this issue, and you have to be ready to make those sacrifices, and I am. Several hundred activists from across the country gather to hear Wayne's final briefing as he reveals the specific target and mission of today's action. Are you ready? <laughs> Their objective is to break into a large egg farm and occupy the property until all the sick and injured chickens are removed. Folks, we are about to march into a massive factory farm in the heart of darkness and hell. We're gonna expose what's happening inside and try to take some of the animals out. And today, we've got a legal opinion from a scholar that we're delivering to the company saying we have the right to be there. We have the right to rescue these animals. Are we all ready to go? Yes. yes. All right, let's do this. A lawyer has written Wayne a legal opinion, arguing that DXE's actions today are protected under a California animal abuse law, Penal Code 597E. However, 597E has yet to be used as a successful legal defense for actions like this. Since DXE is technically trespassing, Vice will not cross property lines to film. All footage inside the farm is filmed by DXE. We are approaching the facility. I can see the signs that say eggs, so it seems like they are starting to rush the facility. They're starting to run. I'm a lawyer. My name is Wayne Shaw. I'm an investigator with the Open Rescue Network. For California Penal Code Section 597 is attached to this letter. You can read the statute yourself. I'm sorry, I'm not so allowed to do this. So thank you very much, sir. No, no, no. Sir, 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 you have the right guys, to do this. You're not allowed to do this. We have the right to do this. Thank you, you very much. You have no right to do this. We do have the right under five Guys, please. Seems like a lot of the workers are coming out really confused about what is happening. Coming onto the property who has no right to be here. These animals are not being mistreated. Yeah, yeah. So this is a good operation? This is a very, very good operation. So you expect arrests? I'm going to go over and tell a deputy. Get out of here! Get out of here! Get out of here! Get out of here! 
have a right under this counter. You don't have a right of anything. We do. Do you want to read this section? You do not have a right. Well, he took pictures. The I don't give a shit view. what you took. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You need help, sir. You cannot do that. That is a stop. No money. You cannot stop do that. that. You are. You are. You are. Look at how cramped these conditions are. They're gonna die of dehydration because they have no access to water. There's probably a few hundred of them to come and support. The animals are going to be coming out soon. We have at least three cars. I don't know how many officers are actually on site. It's going to, they're going to be walking for a few minutes. There's a few hundred of them. Oh, they're all coming out over here. Is this one okay? Is there anything wrong with this one? Nobody in there is okay. What do you have going on right now? She was found in there by the skewers, and I'm just holding on to her right now. Is she dead? Yes. It looks like the police are actually starting to, like, occupy the front of the building and probably stop them from going back in. Police have blocked the entrance to the farm. DXE is considering going back into the property to release more birds. Wayne is negotiating these demands with officers and farm owners. We're going to check on Animal Control's ETA. OK. I um, appreciate everybody's cooperation. So far, so good. And we'll uh, take a look here in a little bit. Thank okay? you very much. I appreciate right. it. So Wayne, what is happening? What we have argued is that under 597, first of all, we have the right to go back in. It doesn't matter. So they cannot stop us. They cannot going stop back us. In. Just like if someone is torturing their dog and you go to give the dog some assistance, you have the right to do it. You have the right to do it. 100 percent Is Sergeant Thompson asking you not go back in? He's asking us not to go back in right now. And and he's he's, he's saying that in exchange for not exercising our right, he will go in with animal control. Sorry. And we will uh, have an opportunity to see some of these diseased and dis distressed animals and take some of them out. If I could ask you guys just to remain there, uh, the property owner has asked that anybody that comes onto his property be arrested for trespassing. So that will occur. We don't want to see that happening. Uh, we will be checking the, the barns with Wayne. Wayne, can I talk to you over here? We'll get going talking to Mike. I've asked you to be reasonable. I've asked you to spend a minute with me. Yeah. And you're refusing that. This is a setup, right? Okay. So this let's, is your game plan. Let's leave the cops outside. Well, let's leave the press and the cameras off and let's have a conversation. Let's leave the cops outside as well. Sure. You and Just me. Both of you guys. OK. Come so on. that I will have do. Have Dave go in Separately, there Separately, I don't even want to go inside. I don't want any police officers. <laughs> let's just go over here. I don't want to go inside. So basically what's happening is the owner said he wants to talk to Wayne without media, without police. So that's where they went. We're going to wait and see what happens. Try to break and steal stuff. How are we doing, Wayne? Am I supposed to Good. Be? So I'll talk to Sounds them about like this. OK, folks, we talked to Sergeant Thompson. Again, the owner is not willing to allow any media in. They said we could remove sick or distressed animals, but they kind of waffled on this, and they said, what do you see as sick and distressed? And, and the owner also said, we did not remove any sick and distressed animals. So will the folks who are planning to do civil disobedience please approach the front? Wayne just announced to everybody that they are going to go in. Here they go. So they are walking across. They're going to get arrested. We see Wayne. There are a lot of people who have charges who are going to get arrested. Wayne is getting arrested. You're on the property. Please just stay back behind the line. Stay back behind the line. Thank you. Thank you. 
In total, 40 activists, including Wayne, are arrested and taken to Sonoma County Sheriff's Office, and they're released the next morning. So we're going to visit Mike. He's one of the owners of the farm that DXE staged the break in. And I'm going to talk to him about how he's feeling a few months out, how it has affected him. Maggie? Hi, Mike. How are you? Good. Mike Weber. Thanks for having me on here. You bet. Um, so in the aftermath of what happened, what, are, what have your thoughts been? What have you been thinking about? Right after it, it was really, why me? What was so bad with our operation that we were the targets? We looked at TXC, and after really understanding what they're about and how they're not for setting animal welfare standards, they're for the eradication of using animals, you realize there's no way there's ever going to be a common ground. They excel at trying to create some, some mayhem, and they, they think it's a positive or constructive way to have a discussion, but it's not. It's detrimental. It shut our business down. It concerned our employees. We have people today who have lingering issues about this type of thing happening again. It's a big operation, but we're small farmers. Do you consider your farm humane? Should there be a concern about how your birds are raised? All farmers should be held accountable. Uh, they should be doing everything they can to provide humane care. For the amount of effort we put in to take care of these animals, that's the way it should be done. We're audited by three different groups that look at our animal care from a humane or animal welfare perspective. The statements that TXC had made were false. They were saying that the birds are not provided water, not provided feed, basically. And I'm happy to show you inside of our chicken houses so you can see that every chicken this has feed and water area. access to it 24 hours a day. This is a cage-free house, and these curtains, this is where the nests are. And what we're doing is creating a safe place for them that's dark, because they like to lay their eggs in a place that's safe from predators. That's why these curtains are here. You can see the nipples as well up here if I push it. Ah, and so they know to do that. Since day one, they've been drinking water this way. For something from that day, I do remember there was a dead bird that one of them did bring out. <clears throat> yeah, animals are just like humans. If you have a, a city with uh, 100,000 people in it, there's, some people die every day. It's part of the natural process. It's one of the things that if I could run a farm and none of my animals ever died, I'd be all for it. But I can't. It's hard. It's hard to be a farmer and have your integrity called on the floor by a bunch of people who don't have any understanding of our industry, the, the challenges we face, the amount of effort that goes into producing a safe, affordable, and humanely raised product. Because of the DXC event, we have evaluated everything we do from an animal welfare perspective. We've looked at ways that we can improve it, and we're actually making some changes. So there's, there's a good thing that comes out of it, but it came out of it in the most unconstructive manner. Do you consider DXE a domestic terrorist group? It's a great question. They're terrorizing us. They're terrorizing our local farmers. Uh, there's not a night that goes by that I hear a slow-moving car that I think that there's somebody out there patrolling. Uh, everybody is nervous now because of what they're doing. There's nothing constructive about their action. Hey, hey. Wayne. How, how are you? Doing? Good. Come on in. Um, so it's been a while since we've seen each other, and yeah. last time I saw you, you were being arrested. Um, right. So just update me what's happened since then. We've done a, a number of other mass demonstrations, but most notably, we went back to Sonoma County with a couple hundred people to do a demonstration at a huge poultry farm. And as a result, 58 activists, including myself, were rounded up and charged with multiple felonies. And, and now we have to win this fight in court. So talk to me a little bit about that. You know, how are you guys working with 597E when you're in court facing some of the charges that you're facing? It's always scary to be in court. It's even more scary when you're facing dozens of felonies, and that's what we're facing now. But at the same time, we know this is an opportunity because if we can win one of these cases, what that will mean is that the law and the court and the jury accept the fact that these animals are living creatures. And that will open the doors for activists across the state and, and across the nation to start infiltrating these farms taking the animals out and exposing an industry that when exposed, people want it to stop. 
So I think what Mike would say and what I think he, he did say to you um, when we were there is that he's doing everything by the book, by the law, but that's not, still not okay for you guys. The laws are corrupt and the laws are often written and enforced by the industry for the industry. Their response is always one and the same, which is this is an industry standard. And our response to that is corporations don't write the laws, the people write the laws. They want to believe what they're doing is not bad for the animals or bad for the environment. Their economic interests certainly are aligned with that belief, but when we actually look at this with a, an objective lens, we have to acknowledge these animals are suffering. Do you think if you and Wayne ever talked again, you don't think that you guys would come to some sort of agreement? I, I don't know a good analogy for it, but the only one I could give you is, if you own a house and there's an arsonist who wants to have a conversation with you, a discussion with you, how could you ever come to agreement on something? He wants to shut all animal agriculture down. I need to pay off the loans. I want to continue our family business. I want to continue to provide fresh food for the citizens of this state. Things happen, and after they happen, life is never the same. For us, it's having several hundred people come, break into your building in broad daylight, push their way past your employees and steal animals out of uh, your house. That happened, you know? I can't, can't go back, can't make it go away. What you were doing is illegal. Yeah. I and mean, what do you say to them? You never change the world by following the rules, first of all. So some rules are meant to be broken. When there's an unjust rule, someone should break it. But more importantly, I don't see us as rule breakers. I see us as rule makers. That if you look at the course of, of human history, these great social changes only occurred because people were willing to test the boundaries of the current system. 